Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Street Fighter 5M Bison, or Vega, depending on where you live. Now, this is one that is kind of unique in that I don't know what the heck it is. <laughs> it's the Street Fighter 5 version of M. Bison, but it's clearly the Street Fighter 2 version of M. Bison, so I'm guessing it's one of their classic costumes. Uh, however, he doesn't seem to have the thingy on his hat, and I don't remember that being a thing in Street Fighter 2, so I'll have to check and see if that's accurate or not. Also, he's really bulky. So, I'm guessing that's because of hitboxes, and it couldn't make him thin like he was in Street Fighter 2. But he doesn't have the cape, so it's not the alpha version, so I don't know, it's a very strange kind of amalgam of different M. Bison designs. Is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? I guess that's up to you to decide. I don't mind either way. I think it's fine, but it is kind of interesting. So anyway, this is kind of an odd figure for other reasons too. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about, let's say to the top of his hat, 17 and a half centimeters, closer to like 16.75 to where his head may be, something like that. If you're really trying to narrow it down, let's say six and a half to his head and six and three quarters to the top of his hat. Again, give or take, that's pretty darn close. He definitely has some bulk to him. Let's do a quick size comparison with some of the other Street Fighters. Vega still seems out of scale to me by at least a little bit. I know he's supposed to be tall, but the way they did his styling, he's just kind of strange. It's not like it would be a problem, but he definitely looks a little bit odd. They kind of all have weird changes in styling across the line, so I don't know. I guess he looks good up against Ryu, that's probably appropriate. But like I said, none of these are any real particular version of the characters, so I guess there's a lot of leeway at the same time as it is very strange. So um, do with that information what you will. They're not really all consistently stylized, so kind of strange. Uh, anyway, this guy looks better than I thought he did in the photos that they originally showed. He seemed uh, like he was going to be pretty slim, but kind of awkward, and he does have a little bit more bulk to him, which I like, and still kind of awkward. The biggest issue with this guy, and it's really just one huge main problem, and then the other ones are all kind of tiny, we'll get to them, uh, but the one thing is the shoulders, and I'm going to bring that up now, even though it's mostly an articulation thing, because it does affect the aesthetic. The way they did it is with these giant sculpted parts with little tiny joints inside and in order to make that work you have to have a huge cavity here and the cavity is not that big but only because there's no meat he has no upper meat for his torso so they didn't need a cavity it's already not there so it gives him a little bit of a strange look in the chest he has a very round boob shaped set of pectoral muscles uh, it's not terrible, but that is why that's like that. If they didn't have to go that route, they could have broadened out the chest and given him plenty of room still for the articulation. So it does make it look a little bit weird and a little bit awkward. I suspect once you pose him, that'll mostly go away, but it is something worth mentioning for sure. The rest we'll get into as far as the shoulders go when we get into the articulation. Other thing worth noting in this area, obviously we don't have a bicep swivel, which does usually tend to afford better sculpt for the musculature. However, on this guy, it's it's a really, really soft sculpt for the muscles. Uh, and the way they did the brachialis is very strange on this guy. It doesn't look right anatomically. And even if you don't know the anatomy, you're going to see it and probably think it looks a little bit weird the way they did it. And then they did the elbow joints with a huge cavity in the bicep. So again, very strange choices in some places. On the bright side though, he does have shading throughout. It's maybe a little bit harsh and spotty, but still definitely looks nice overall. I think it's going to look fine on a shelf. They did add a little bit of shading around the edges of the metal parts. So that makes it stand out nicely. The blue is painted nicely. It's uh, glossy, or at least a shiny satin. Maybe not, uh, I guess semi-gloss would be good. Same thing for the belt. The metal parts are metallic and kind of glossy, so that's good. The red parts are nowhere near as shiny as they were in the original photos, which is a very good thing. We don't want shiny clothes on Bison. Still a little bit of a luster to him, but it's not too bad. His face isn't very shiny at all. That's good. His hands are probably, well, not probably. They're definitely too shiny. But all in all, it's an aesthetically pleasing figure. I'm just saying these things that are wrong with it would make it look even better if they weren't wrong with it. But it does look good overall. I think it's a pretty nice balance of the right amounts of shading and paint and whatnot. I'm pretty pleased with it. So aesthetically, I'm going to give it an 8. It looks really good. It could look super duper good 
if it had the few problems that were corrected. As far as accessories go, we don't have a ton, which is kind of the case for most of the Street Fighter figures. We have the kind of stern face that's, I say kind of too much, I gotta stop that, and basically, what the heck. We basically kind of have a stern face that comes on him in the package, then we basically kind of have a smirking face. Love the smirking face. The regular one's fine, but the smirking one just totally captures the bison vibe. Love it. Uh, we do have an alternate set of arms for folded arms, and they are painted nicely because the wristbands and hands are separate pieces from the arms, so there's no bleeding at all going on there. Super duper. As for the hands, we have two fist hands that come on them in the package, and then two clenchy hands that are his accessories. To go in those clenchy hands, we have some little fire effects, which are very nicely done. They're saturated as heck and shaded, and that is really nice. And then the last accessory we have, gosh, I'm so tired of looking at these cardboard things that they give us. They're just not good. Like, the printouts are nice. Never said the printouts were bad. They have high quality print on them, but they wedge them into the package like a bunch of dingleberries. Every one I've gotten other than like the maybe the very first set have come out folded and wrinkled and creased and they just, they're, they're crap. Like you're never gonna use these unless you hide them completely. Like if you're taking a photo and can crop out the edges, maybe it'll work, but then you're still gonna have a seam in the middle. So I don't get it personally. I think these are a terrible accessory, a waste of money because even though it's not gonna cost that much for them to make these overall, add them up and it starts to take away from their profits and they could use that money towards something else like another accessory or who knows what these kind of suck i'm curious for those of you that collect these guys how many of you guys actually use these backdrops because for me they're not going to look good in my shelf and they're definitely not going to look good in photography unless you're really clever about it so i don't see the point i don't like them but they are included so if you like them good for you okay so that's it for accessories i'll give them a seven it's definitely a decent batch of accessories, nothing impressive, like overall impressive, but definitely a few nice parts. So that's pretty good. Now it's time for the articulation. And some of it's really nice on this guy. The head, for instance, is on a, a double ball peg, so you can move it around as much as you want. Except for the fact that they gave him a neck that is just, it's, it's chonky. It's a chonky neck. You can rotate the head on it fine, but you almost always have the chin just buried into the neck unless he's looking up. And the way the neck is designed, because it's just a ball peg, the whole neck moves around on a ball peg down here, but if you lean it forward, it doesn't really want to. Uh, and it does have cavities in there in order to account for the shoulder articulation, which we'll get to in a second, but you can't move the neck around enough to make it so that it's not like he's looking up in order to clear his chin from his neck. So he's got a really, really big neck, which does limit him some, but you shouldn't have too much trouble posing him. It's just not gonna look as good as it maybe would have if he didn't have a huge neck with cavities in it. All right, now the shoulder pads are on little tiny ball pegs in the back. They move around surprisingly well. They're gonna be fine. They're not gonna get in the way too much and they're gonna be able to hide most of this ugliness pretty well. Now for the shoulders, we have a butterfly joint, which is not like a regular butterfly joint. It is a vertical one. I have no idea why. You can already raise the arm. Like, I don't, I don't get why they did that. Plus, it's not like Bison's known for raising his arms straight up. And if you need to do the psycho crusher, you can just forward his arms that way. So I don't, I don't get it. There's no horizontal movement or lateral movement. It's only vertical. Very, very strange, and it caused a giant cavity in the neck. Why'd they do that? I don't know. Ball peg from the shoulder into that, so the whole arm moves around on that, and then you already saw the little tiny ball hinge, which is functional enough, but it does create gaps, and it it's not the best way to do it by far. This one's tolerable, especially since you can hide it with this, but you should know by now, if you've watched any of my reviews on these kind of figures, that kind of shoulder is not the best way to do it. It also significantly limits your bicep swivel. That's all you get definitely sucks. Double jointed elbow as far as the hinge goes, you get really nice range on that because of the cavity in the bicep, except it doesn't make that much of a difference because if you use that cavity all the way, you can see me bringing the elbow up through that cavity like that, you can't use the second one as much. So you're only at 90 degrees there. If you use the bottom one first and then the cavity, you get a little bit more, but not much. So if you do kind of both of them, that's gonna be your best option, but it's still just about 90 degrees. So why do we have this giant mechanical ugly elbow to get just about 90 degrees? I don't know, that is not good, that is a terrible elbow. People complain about Storm's elbows. This is way worse. This is one of the worst elbows we've seen in a long time for any company. 
except for maybe McFarlane. We do have a swivel in the bicep, which or in the elbow, which gives us a bicep swivel, practically speaking, air quotes and whatnot. So that's pretty good. For the wrists, you have just a little tiny ball hinge, which will be fine. You're not gonna get a ton of range because the hands are big, ball hinge is tiny, but that's pretty much standard. For the torso, I believe it's just a single ball peg. It doesn't feel like a double or a hinge. It moves around. You're not gonna get a ton of range out of it. Rotation's limited. Crunching is limited and it tries to fight you. And then the leaning to the side is very limited. Lower abdominal section is much better. You get a lot of range out of that and that is pretty good. You can get your rotation out of that, your leaning and whatnot. So between the two, you should have enough posability. Top one is definitely pretty limited though. For his skirt piece, if anybody complains about me calling it a skirt piece when it's not actually a skirt, I think I'm gonna quit YouTube. I'm saying skirt piece because on the actual plastic part of the action figure, it's designed like a skirt. I don't know why people are having trouble with that lately, but apparently that's a thing. It's not an actual skirt, it's the bottom of his jacket, but here it is functional like a skirt. Anyway, it's very stiff and it does prevent the legs from going forward effectively, so that sucks. Going out to the side, you're pretty much set, so that is okay. The hips are designed with a swivel and a hinge, and then another swivel down here. Essentially like your Dragon Ball figures. It's not as good as the Dragon Ball figures. It seems like a cheaper version, but it does get the job done if this was more flexible. And I guess you could force it if you really wanted to, but he's gonna have some limitations there. For the knee, you have a single joint. It will rotate at the top and the bottom. That's kind of useless, but you just have that one single knee joint, just about 90 degrees. Pretty limited, looks good when the legs are up. For the ankles, you have a ball hinge, which works really nicely forward and back. That is really good. You can swivel it around to get an ankle rocker, but you don't need it because he actually has a built-in ankle rocker, which is fantastic. And these guys are pegged on to flex around and hide the joint, and then you get a decent little toe hinge. So the feet and ankles are really nice. Hips are okay, except they're limited by the skirt. Shoulders are weird, elbows are weird, torso's okay, neck is okay. Yeah, it's not the best, but it's definitely good enough. I'll give it a seven for articulation. Some parts are probably worth a nine. Other parts are probably worth more like a six. So I'm gonna average it down to a seven because I think there's more at the lower end than at the higher end, but it's not bad. So final verdict on this guy. All in all, I'm pleased with it. I would be a lot more pleased with it if the problems didn't exist, but I think most people are gonna enjoy this figure. And so I'm gonna give it a final verdict of eight out of 10. I think most people will enjoy it despite the issues. Some people will really hate the issues and probably not want to get it, but those are probably going to be fewer people than the people who like it. So that's where I'm at with it. You can let me know what you think in the comment section below. And otherwise, you should probably give the thumbs up if the video was good. <laughs> give the thumbs up. That's great. Give it a thumbs up if the video was good. If you didn't like it, that's okay too, but you probably should subscribe because I have new videos out just about every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.